<laughs> Cheers! Welcome to Cozy Rosie Reads, my YouTube channel, where we discuss books, literature, thrifting, if you're into that. My name is August, and if you can't tell by my absolutely horrendous accent, I am from Michigan. We have just the worst accent, and I am very aware of that. Just know that I hate it too. <laughs> I have been wanting to join booktube for it's been over a year now and fear has definitely kept me back from starting it. I got so intimidated by booktube primarily because what I was seeing on booktube was a lot of really talented youtubers who continually read new releases and I am not someone who reads new releases. For a while I started to just so I could understand what people were talking about because a lot of people would chat about the same book over and over and over again because it's new, it's fresh, and everyone's reading it. And I just couldn't follow along so I just gave up on my dream of doing booktube. Um, I actually started filming them in, on my iPhone and putting them on like my Instagram like IGTV, but that format was really not plausible for something as in-depth and detailed as talking about literature. I just thought no one's interested in what I find thrifted. No one's interested in the books that came out in like 1980s or the early 2000s. Everyone wants what's new and fresh and hot, even though I personally was getting really bored of seeing the same books on booktube over and over and over again. Not to discredit the content and the details and the wonderful things that booktubers talk about, but it was just something that I noticed in the booktube community and I couldn't find anybody who I could really relate with in terms of reading style. So to kick things off, I want to reassure you or maybe just share what I'm personally into so you know Hey, why should I watch this August lady? Like, what is she, what do I have to gain? So if you're thinking that, let me tell you. I read every genre. Every genre. If you're looking for recommendations for memoir, nonfiction, short story collections, graphic novels, YA, I'm super newbie to romance though and fantasy. I am a newbie. I'm not anti any of those. I am getting into them. So bear with me. The one, one or two little things that I am not super mega hardcore into, which you might be able to tell by my bookcase, is high fantasy or books that are typically series. Um, series are, have been very difficult for me to get into, but if you are a wide variety reader and you like reading books that are hidden gems that most people might not have ever heard of. Um, reading books that you find at a thrift store that's already been annotated, that has that musty smell of used books and crinkled pages and written in the margins, this is definitely the channel for you. I also read audiobooks, ebooks, and physical books. Audiobooks do count as real reading. If you do not believe in that, get out of here, please. One other big thing is I am huge about accessibility. I think reading should be accessible to everybody. No one should be hated on for what content or literature they read, and we should make it accessible for everybody. That's why I thrift my books. That is why I use free apps like Libby and Hoopla that are linked directly to my library card for free access to ebooks and audiobooks. This resource is so important, and I think it's really important to continue to make books accessible. If you're ever interested in a book that I have, let me know and I'll be happy to tell you where I got it. I try to be extremely transparent when it comes to where I purchase my books. And you'd be surprised, some of my favorite books of all time are from Dollar Tree. One dollar at Dollar Tree. Never discredit where you buy your books, never discredit the importance of accessibility when it comes to reading. A little bit about me personally, um, yes, so. Hi, this is awkward. I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm 25. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm actually a professional wedding and portrait photographer. I have the best job in the entire world. It is seriously like just so, so cool. I will link my work down below if you're interested. I have always been interested in photography. I also was working towards getting a degree in photography and a minor in cinematography at Ontario College of Art and Design University in Toronto. I lived there for, in Toronto for two years, absolutely loved it. It's definitely a place that I still dream about and miss a lot. 
but you know, due to really difficult visas of being a citizen of the states, it was very, very difficult to maintain a like student visa, work visa. It was almost damn near impossible. I now live in this really cute small apartment um, with my partner of eight years, as well as our two naked hairless sphinx cat, Umi and Winston. They will be making very regular appearances on this channel, so if you're interested in just some quality sphinx cat content, stay tuned, like subscribe. I have been a reader ever since I was little. So many of like my childhood photographs are of me reading, always having a book in my hands, and that's just something that I've loved. There have been many seasons of my life where I've fallen off the reading wagon. It didn't, it just wasn't around for me, but once I rediscovered it, a part of me would come back. You know what I'm saying? If you're a book lover, you probably know what I'm talking about, but you feel whole again. You feel connected again. You feel this love and power of just words and reading and being so interconnected with the story. In 2020, last year, I read 108 books, which is the most I have read since keeping track of how many books I've read. I will share my absolute favorites with you just so you can get an idea of the kind of books that I read. And then I'll also share a little bit of my all-time favorite books ever, so you can also understand the kind of literature and writing style, stories, genres that I like, so hopefully you can find something new as well. Like, watch this channel and be like, oh my gosh, yes. And it introduces you to new books. I think that's what booktube should be about. It introduces you to new things, and I would love to hear if you have read any of these, if you have any further recommendations as well. So I want to share with all of you my top three favorite books of 2020, so you get a good idea of what kind of books I read, what I'm into, and if you've read these before, then hopefully we can connect and chat about them because, ooh baby. My top favorite book of 2020 was Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. I actually listened to the audiobook version and then my parents gifted me this for Christmas, which I'm very grateful for. But this is one of the most bizarre, ecstatic, delightful, whimsical, magical realism memoir thing. It is a creation all upon itself. Jenny Slate is now my new favorite person in the entire world. I really did not think or know that I would connect to what this was. Because it's not a memoir, 100%. It's like a children's story, like miniature children's stories, meshed up, chopped up into tiny little bits, put onto an ice cream sundae, served with like a golden little dainty spoon, and then served to like a poodle, which is Jenny Slate and it talks in Jenny Slate's voice. You know what I'm saying? Like That is the type of writing. It is so creative and I already cannot wait to read it. This was actually one of the last books that I read in 2020 and it made me cry when it ended. I was so sad that it ended. I highly recommend the audiobook, but I am so thrilled and excited to read the physical version again. So this was my favorite book of 2020. Did not anticipate it, did not know anything about it going into it, and it blew my darn socks off. Changing gears entirely, my next favorite book of 2020 was Butterfly Skin by Sergei Kuznetsov. This is translated from Russian and it is definitely not for everybody. I would not recommend this to any person walking down the street. There are so many trigger warnings in here for, um, oh, basically just everything under the sun. This takes place in Moscow and follows a journalist as well as a serial killer. Um, the serial killer targets women and really does some like true detective, first season gruesome art installations with these women's bodies. It gets very kinky because the journalist is very into BDSM and kind of strikes up a relationship with the serial killer without knowing that he's really the serial killer, but she's also writing a story about him. Things happen, things get very intertwined, but there's something about just the writing style that is so intriguing, and I loved this book. It kept me on my toes. It's definitely a thriller, crime, suspenseful book. It is quite disgusting, but I really love disgusting, so this worked for me. I love it. This copy was actually found at Dollar Tree. I am not quite sure what it was doing there, but I'm so thrilled that I picked it up. <laughs> and my third and final favorite of 2020 was A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This copy is my partner's. He read it for one of his university classes and kept the copy, thank goodness, and I read it and... <laughs> 
oh my gosh, I think I watched like three or four interviews with Ruth Ozeki after reading this because I was just so intrigued by her as a person, by her ideas, by her brain. She's one of those authors that I wish I could just like kind of crawl into her brain and see everything the way that she sees it and really see how she analyzes and dissects and creates these visions. Oh my gosh, this book follows so many things going on, but mainly it follows a young girl named Now who is 16 years old writing in a diary before the 2011 tsunami hits in Japan. Her diary is then found on the coast of like the Pacific Northwest where an author named Ruth finds it on the beach and she is reading the diary trying to figure out what happened to now trying to track her down make sure she and her family are safe it's just such an enthralling story i love the bounces between japan and like tokyo to the pacific northwest like everything about this book was just a dream come true um for exactly what i personally look for in a book where it's like aesthetic character development Physics and time plays a really big role into this, as well as like family and emotions, depression and trauma, um, and kind of almost like intergenerational trauma. There's just so many wonderful things happening here. So that is another one of my 2020 favorites. Okay, we already talked quite a lot about books, but now I must share with you all my favorite books of all time. So maybe we can connect even further with the kinds of literature we like to read, okay? Are we excited or what? I'm very curious to see if um, we have some commonalities here, if we have some favorite books. So if you've read any of these and you loved them, please comment below. I am so, so excited. I kind of divided this up into like different categories. Each one has kind of its own like little superlative. So my favorite book of all time, all time, is Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. This book was one that I found at Dollar Tree once again, and I must read the inside flap to you all because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to explain it at all whatsoever. This is one of those genre-bending books that is just everything, everything I look for in a book. Bizarre, quirky, weird, confusing, time travel, space, I, could list adjectives all day long, so let's just read the inside flap, shall we? Radiance is a decopunk pulp science fiction alt history space opera mystery set in a Hollywood and solar system very different from our own. So this is my favorite book of all time. I cannot wait to reread it. I don't know when I'll get around to rereading it because it is quite chunky, um, but it's just, it makes me so happy because it's so perfect <laughs> so if you've read radiance please let me know if it sounds fantastic to you let me know because let's connect and i can gush about it endlessly to you all but yeah this is this is everything to me <laughs> the next superlative that i will be sharing with you all is my favorite childhood book of all time and this is the book that i have reread the most in my life and that is the book thief by marcus zuzak i have read this book at least three or four times. I can't quite remember. My copy is very well loved. I was that kid in like elementary school and middle school who was like obsessed with World War II, like eerily obsessed with it. Like I read a lot of books about World War II and it's still something that just is very, very intriguing but also very unsettling to me. But The Book Thief was just a book that I immediately fell in love with and I loved how creative it was that the narrator is death. I remember just like having my mind completely blown. I didn't know that was something you could do in literature is have a perspective and a narrator from something completely outside of like a human experience almost. This is a, quite a popular book as well. So um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. And I would love to reread this one again sometime soon as well because it was just so, it's very formative to my reading experience now. I think reading this book definitely has curved my reading style into what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy just because it is such a unique experience. It is quite chunky as well. I just thoroughly, thoroughly love this book. Okay, and the final one, because I'm only doing like three of each here, my most recent all-time favorites. I actually read this month. It will be in my January wrap-up videos, which I'm really excited to share with you all because I read some fantastic literature in January, but that is 
Snow by Betsy Howie. This is a book that I found at my local like used bookstore where it's like floor to ceiling books, hardwood creaky floors, books on the floor. This was actually a book that was just on the floor. This is my new favorite book of all time. I actually have ideas for, this sounds so cheesy, but I promise it'll be cool, but like I already have ideas for tattoos that are inspired by this book because it hit me in a way that I haven't been emotionally like in a while. This book follows an unnamed woman who is recently divorced and moves away from New York City and stays in a cabin and gets snowed in and from there a lot of magical realism happens. Her cats start talking to her but basically they're all personifications and metaphors of her inner parts and inner pieces of herself. It's just all about like how these pieces of ourselves and who we are manifest in our bodies as like anger is really just masked fear. Like we don't give ourselves full credit for how amazing and incredible we are and this is just like a journey of self-discovery but through talking animals. I can't fully explain how much I love this book. Like, it makes me so emotional. This is the book that has most recently joined the ranks of my all-time favorites, which is a very slim category for me. All-time favorites, you really gotta be doing something good and this one blew me away. Later on, I will be sharing a video of like 21 books I want to read in 2021, but I do want to share not just specific books that I want to read, but what my challenges are for myself in 2021. So the Goodreads challenge last year in 2020, I said I wanted to read 100 books, which was pretty big for me as the year before. I think I read like 60 or 80 somewhere in there, um, which is still really good. But I pushed myself to 100 and then I surpassed it by reading 108 books. So I was pretty close. I wasn't super far past the 100 mark goal. So for this year in 2021, I decided to keep it the same at 100 books, but what I'm doing differently this year, and this is something that I've been so geeked out about, so jazzed about, really happy that I've implemented it in my life, is I choose my books now through a random genre generator. For this, I use a free website called Wheel of Names, and all you can do is just add in all the genres that you want. It's like a Wheel of Fortune, you just kind of give it a little spin, and it chooses a genre for for me. This has been incredibly helpful, especially in January, for me to read books that are on my physical TBR that I just keep neglecting over and over and over again because I'm never in the mood for science fiction. I'm never in the mood for like a short story collection. Those are books that I really have to like push myself to read and then they just sit there and I feel so guilty about it. So in my random genre generator I have typical genres. Then I also have included on there is BIPOC literature as well as LGBTQIA plus literature. This is because I find majority of my books thrifted <laughs> and I live in <laughs> West Michigan, which if you are not familiar is kind of a big all around Bible Belt. Very whitey, white, white, white. So when I go thrifting, 60% of what is on the shelves is like biblical literature. It is wonder bread white. And so most of the books that I end up bringing home are not from authors of color. And this is something that I know I need to work on. This is something I know and I want to continue to improve. It is continuing to push me towards growing and becoming more and more and more aware of how many white authors I read from. So that is what I am about. That is why I'm here on booktube. This is what I'm really, really passionate about. This is something that I just have always wanted to do and fear has held me back. And in 2021, I was like, na na na. We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it, who cares? So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being here. Please stay tuned, feel free to subscribe. I have some awesome content coming soon, such as a cozy thrifting weekend reading vlog, as well as my January wrap up, a newbie booktube tag. So much fun content is coming your way. <laughs> I hope you really enjoy it again. The whole point of Cozy Rosie is to really embody the environment of a really cozy, safe, comforting atmosphere. I want you to feel welcome to wrap up in a blankie and get a nice cup of hot tea and just sit and enjoy talking about books and literature. The name of my apartment is Cozy Rosie. So that is where the name came from. I really do want to embody a place where it's safe to be yourself. You can show up and listen in and just even put it on in the background and I just hope it's a 
really big comfort to be able to talk about books in depth. That means like my videos may be a little bit longer than normal. So no matter where you are, you can feel like you are here and you are a part of it and we're a part of this community and discussing and loving books and loving the cozy environment and atmosphere that they create. So thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you so much for being a part of this, for watching, for supporting me, for just being a fellow book lover. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.